Hello, hello, hello everyone. Talks here again. How are things with you guys? So, it is now Sunday. Magic the Gathering's Endicott Rising pre-release is out. So today, we're going to do pre-release kit opening. Hopefully we get something good out of it. I am really hopeful. Don't think you can get any of the duel or the fetch lands out of this here, but you know, what can you do? But also, I have this here, wonderful special booster pack. So if you don't know, a uh, friend of mine, Wombat Bill, he streams on Twitch on Wednesday night. He did a booster box opening of Zendikar Rising, and he has split into the three piles. And basically, to a subscriber, lucky subscriber on the Twitch channel, he gives away one row of the rares, which I was lucky enough to be the first winner of. So, it's a whole row of rares. He also gives away the box toppers, so that's four chances to win. If you want to be involved, highly recommend going over to Wombat Bill's Twitch channel. Link is down below. If you subscribe, you're in with the chance to win. He's doing it again for the Zendikar Rising set boosters this Wednesday. So, it should be a good laugh, and hopefully, one of you guys get lucky. But definitely go check it out. As I said, links and everything down below. But I think we should get to opening and see if we get lucky today. Okay, guys. So here we go. Here is the pre release kit. But we're also going to have a look through the Zendikar Rising rares that I won from one of that Bill's giveaway. So we'll do that there at the end. So for now, I think we should just. Crack in to this. Hopefully we get something good. So this is my first Magic pre-release, which should be very exciting. So let me get the packs out. We will keep the promo cards till after the packs. Not a bad selection of packs. You know what? I won the rares on Anissa pack, so we will save those three for last. Or Nahiri. Sorry, heads away with it. Nissa will be second, but we'll open the first Jace pack. First and only one we have. I hope four big things. I do love a new magic set. So here we go. We'll quickly go through the commons. Just to see. Because I need to come up with some ideas. Hmm, the pack beast. Good for the new party mechanic. Because I need to come up with some ideas for Friday Night Magics and things like that there. Plus I'm going to try and make a big push to get to Arena Mythic in Constructed. Possibly limited. We'll just have to see how things affect me with this new set. Although I hear good things about it, here's been fun. Cinderclasm. Umara Wizard, which is flip, so there you go. On the other side, beautiful land art, or creature with awesome art as well. And there we go, <laughs> wayward guide based. A lot of talk I see online about this here one. Could be interesting, especially with the landfall mechanic, uh, return a land to your hand. For 2-2 two, two for 1, trample haste, might not be too bad. And then a glorious full art swamp, because swamp is my colour of choice. So yeah. Not a bad start. Moving into the Nissa pack. Utility knife, which could be a really good equipment. An ambusher, more goblins. Ooh, hmm. 
Broken wings. Destroy. Uh, it could be interesting. Good removal. Mind drain. Resolute strike. A chilling trap. Expedition champion. Vanquish the weak. Ooh, the new uh, card style. It looks pretty freaking awesome. With a scythe cat. Three, two, one for three. With trample and landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a one one counter on it. Could be pretty good. Bubble snare. Interesting. There's the kicker ability as well. I think I might have skipped past a couple that had kicker, but pretty cool. Journey to Oblivion. There's another party mechanic card. That could be quite interesting. I might try and build a party deck. Just to see, make a proper like adventure. Oh no, have I spoiled something? Here we go, Black Bloom Rogue. And I hear Rose is gonna be a good one to have. And there is the Black Bloom Bog, if I can get this to focus. There we go, awesome. I think the Zendikar artwork is just phenomenal. So, what do we get? Oh, World Sculptor, Elemental. Whenever it enters the battlefield, create a 0-1 green plant token. For each basic land you control. Good for building up blockers. And whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put four plus one plus one counters on target plant you control. That's really good. Hmm. Might try and do something with that. And then there is another swamp. Different style, but still beautiful. And there is just a token for a double face card. Because the modal lands are the new addition to this year's set, which can be quite interesting. Can be spells or lands. So we'll have to see how that there kind of plays out with how you uh, try and fix your mana in your decks and stuff like that there. Hopefully it'll be quite interesting. Hopefully we definitely see something a wee bit different and hopefully post rotation, hopefully with a new set out, there's something to give an answer to Uro, who is quite troublesome and constructed. Ooh, another New art style with the Skyclave Squid. Whenever land enters the battlefield, I can attack. Okay. It's pretty good. Putting Feldar. Interesting. Glacial Grasp. Allied Assault. Ravager's Mace. Hmm. Then we have. The Bala Grid Recovery. Turn target card from your graveyard to your hand. For three. Interesting. See the land. It is pretty nice looking too. And the rare. Levala, Linvala Shield of the Seagate. Three, three for three. White, blue. Flying. At the beginning of your... At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you have a full party, there's a party mechanic again, choose target non-land permanent and opponent controls. Until your next turn, it can't attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated. Sacrifice Lovana, choose hexproof or indestructible. Creatures you control gain that ability until end of turn. That's not bad. Angel Wizard plays in the party mechanic. Also Angel. I think there's a couple of really good Angel cards in this set. So it could be quite good for building an Angel Commander. There is a beautiful island. Well, it is really good looking artwork, but quite destructive. And then again, just another one of those for the tokens for the double sided. Moving into the first Nahiri pack. Now since getting back into magic, I have to admit I've been reading up on the lore an awful lot. 
especially with Zendikar, uh, since I knew this year's set was coming out. And Zendikar's pretty cool, playing for things to be set. I like the idea of it. Be interesting. Wish there was some Eldrazi floating around, but hey ho, what can you do? Maybe in the future. Oh, I do see that the next main lane set is going to be Vikings. So Kalheim, that should be very interesting indeed. There's already been a few leaks or potential things with the secret lair that might come in connection with it. Because it's going to be Walking Dead themed. So there's potential for Vikings versus zombies, which could be interesting. Got a core blade master. Two equip warriors you control have double strike. Cool. Then we have a black sorcery. Target your opponent via your hand. You may choose a card with converted mana cost three or greater. And that player, ooh, three or greater. That's pretty good hand disruption. Three mana the three or greater. That's pretty good. And then have a look. At the caverns, the black mana. Oh, that is creepy and awesome. And I love it. And oh, yes. Oh, Forsaken Monument. Happy days. That is going to be phenomenal. Especially in Commander. I hear really good things about it, and there's potentially an infinite mana uh, combo you can get with this here. Where you tap, was it Basalt Monolith? Tap it to get two mana, because this here is out in the field, you get an extra mana, so you can untap it. Tap it again, and then rinse and repeat, and you just build up infinite mana that way. So Forsaken Monument is definitely one heck of a combo piece to have. Plus it gives 2-2 two, two to Colourless. And whenever you cast Colourless, you gain 2 life. That's just... a silly... mythic. But I'm very happy with it. And there is the Plains Full Art Land, which is pretty good. And we have an Illusion Token. Which is pretty good. And then just Commander. On the back... Now here he coming through. Maybe she's my lucky one. Oh, if you've seen the uh, if you've seen the trailer video for Zendikar Rising, you might not think she's the best. She's a bit of a dick. Good intentions, but a bit of a dick. Then again, it was a pretty hype introduction to it. Ooh, another human rogue. Flash flying. Mill. Hmm, Mill might be good in this set as well. Deliberate. Scry to draw for two. Hmm. Scorch Rider. Missile Lynx. There we go. The Stonework Pack based again. Spitfire Lagic. Vine Gecko. Nice. Elemental Lizard artwork. Then moving into a Moss Pit Skeleton. Plant Skeleton Kicker. Kicked enters the battlefield with three 1 1 counters. Whenever one or more 1 1 counters are put on a creature you control, if it's in the graveyard, you may put on top of the library. Ooh. Cool. Cylindy Vision. Toxic card of your library, maybe an instant or sorcery. From among them, put that into your hand and the rest of the bottom of your library in random order. Cool. I'll have a look at the land on the back. Ooh, now that is pretty. Now that is an island. I like that. And for this one, Aura Sky Clave Hifliophant. I think I'm saying that right. It's a cleric. So, 3 3 for 4 white black. Lifelink, whenever it enters the battlefield, whenever it or another cleric you control dies. Return target cleric card with lesser converted mana cost from your graveyard to the battlefield. Hmm. Cleric tribal. 
could be very interesting to see. Oh, first foil, it's only a common. One, two for one. Oof, four and a white. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one to the end of the turn. That is very expensive for a plus one, plus one. Hmm. And there is another island. Beautiful. And an insect token. One, one insect. But I love the colors, love the green and pink. Beautiful. And here we go. Last of the pre-release packs. Don't think we've done too badly. Now I just have to come up with a pre-release sealed deck idea and I'll be happy. Although easier said than done and that'll be tomorrow morning's problem. Oh yeah, well I'm recording this year on Friday the 18th. So it'll be the Saturday morning's problem i.e. yesterday's issue. But we'll see how it goes. Spur supplies. Tapped. Draw a card. Sacrifice it to draw a card. Hmm. That's okay for two. Yeah. Marshall Adapt. Another. Canopy Baloth. 4-3 for 4, landfall whenever a land enters a battlefield. It gets plus 2, plus 2 until the end of turn. Ooh, that's pretty nice. For a common. Another Spitfire. Rune Crab, which I hear is going to be... If you're just doing anything involving mill, it's just going to kick arse. I think it's going to be a really good card in Limited. I think it's... I guess it's going to be really good. It's a 0 3 for 1, and the landfall is whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent mills 3 cards. If you get this year out early, turn 1, Ruin Crab, I mean, you're laughing, because hopefully, if everything works out, you're going to be dropping a land every turn following that there, potentially. Potentially with some of them, even more times. Or if you mix it with that, if you pull it with the Wayward Guide Beast, pull a land back. Every turn, play it next turn, mill three. Oh, that is going to be good. Vastwood Fortification. The one one counter on target creature. Not bad. Or the land is a thicket, which is pretty cool looking. But for one, I think that their spell is pretty good for an instant speed. Let's get you out of some tricky situations. And Thieving Skydiver. So Kicker X. Ooh. So it's a 2 1 for 2 flying whenever it enters the battlefield. If it was kicked, gain control of target artifact with converted mana cost X or less. If the artifact is an equipment, attach it to th Thieving Skydiver. That's pretty good. So it's not even like gain control at the end of turn, it's just gain control. That is pretty good. That is, ooh, that's interesting. And then we have Awesome Mountain. And then just another of those are token uh, double set of cards. Cool. And what else? Don't want to see. Um, those spoilers yet. Pretty cool life dice. Nice red and black color scheme to it. And we get Wee Divider. We leaflet, just giving a breakdown. Of the set and how to build advice and how to build a pre-release kind of like pokemon you do get a code card but i am going to keep that because i am going to be streaming a lot of zendikar rising hopefully and for friday night magic so we will have a look at the promo cards shadows verdict 
So for five, exile all creatures and planeswalkers with converted mana cost three or less from the battlefield, and all creature and planeswalker cards with converted mana cost three or less from all graveyards. Hmm, that's pretty cool. Just gonna very carefully open this. So I can put it in my magic binder. And then just going to move all the commons and uncommons out of the way. Move that and the lands. Keep it aside because I need to build a pre-release deck. There are the pack rares. Should keep everything separate. Now, let us go through what I won in Wombat Bill's competition. See what way everything is. So as I said, links down below, this Wednesday coming, which will be, let's check the dates. Wednesday, 23rd, 7 p.m., twitch.tv slash Wombat Bill. He's going to be opening the Zendikar Rising uh, set booster box, which should be pretty interesting because it's a new style of boosters just coming out with this here set. And again, I think he's planning to do the same, where it's going to be different rows every uh, stack of cards. He's going to roll or spin the Wheel of Fate and give one lucky subscriber uh, the rare city pulls. And then at the end, the box topper is also going to go one of the subscribers, which could be a fetch land, which is the big hit. Everyone, everyone loves a fetch land. Okay, Tabrax Hope's Demise. Legendary creature, Demon Cleric. Cool. Null Priest of Oblivion. That is, I'm liking getting the black rares. I do like playing black as my manor. mana. Mall of the Skyclaves. Ooh, flying first strike, 2-2, two, two. 3, 4 equip, could be interesting. Tajuru Paragon, so it's an elf, but it is also all of the party members. Interesting. Ah, uh, the pathway. Timber Crown pathway, so full art, land. But it's a choice land, so you get to pick, and I just gave away what the next one is. So you get to pick what it is, whether you want it to come in as a red source or a green source. Once it's down, that's it locked in, unless you pull it back and then replay it, which could be interesting. I have ideas in my head now. There is the Lotus Cobra, which I think a lot of people are really excited about. I think that this is just beautiful, and it is... In fact, a foil, just confirming, as you've seen in the opening video, it is my background for the minute because I just think it is absolutely stunning. And it's a 2 1 for 2, and its landfall is whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, add one mana of any color. So that could be very dangerous, very awesome. And Mythic Angel of Destiny. Flying Double Strike. This is a weird card. So it is a 2 6 for 5. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you and that player each gain that much life. At the beginning of your end step, if you have at least 15 life more than your starting life total, each player that Angel of Destiny attacked this turn loses the game. Interesting. That is going to be a very interesting Angel card to play around with. But I'm hopeful. And we have another pathway. So this one is a red, white. Pretty awesome. We have the Relic Robber, Goblin Rogue. So two, two for three with haste. Whenever it does combat damage to a player, that player creates a zero one colored Goblin Construct artifact creature token with this creature camp block. And at the beginning of your upkeep, this creature deals one damage to you. Hmm, it's pretty good. If, you, if it stays out, it's pretty good. 
Roiling Vortex. Pretty good enchantment. Karkon Imitator. Cards can <laughs> cards count block warriors. That is pretty good. And then we have the Shatter Skull Charger. Zargas, Thief of Heartbeats, which I hear good things about. Potentially a big commander player, which should be very interesting. Very, very interesting. And then just that there to keep the card safe. So that is absolutely stunning. So cool. So there you go, guys. This is a wee introduction to the Zendikar Rising pre-release set. As I say, um, I myself, I'm going to be streaming a lot of Magic the Gathering Arena. My Twitch is down below, but it's twitch.tv slash thisistalks. You can also follow me on Twitter at Twitter at thisistalks. And as I say, Wombat Bills links are going to be down below. Join the Discord so you can find out about any other giveaways, prizes, any other random things that are happening. But yeah, hopefully I will see you guys at some point, either in my Twitch or definitely on Wednesday in Wombat Bills. And if you have Amazon Prime, then you have Twitch Gaming, you get a free subscription. Gotta be in it to win it. Okay, guys, I shall see you later. So until next time, see ya.